Hi guys and welcome back to Cooking on a Narrowboat. This is the last episode in my barbecue series and today I'm going to do basically all vegetables. This is obviously things that one would cook to go along with the meat dishes I've done in the past. So let's get on with it shall we? I've part prepped some of the vegetables just to cut down on the video time so hopefully you'll enjoy it better so if you're not into cooking go and watch my next video which will be on cruising so here we go I have some vegetables here I'm going to do various different types of vegetables these ones I'm going to cook in foil so let's get on with it so we're going to chop these up into fairly small pieces because we want them to cook fairly quickly and if you notice this is butternut squash and I've left the skin on it washed it thoroughly and left the skin on there's a lot of goodness in that skin probably the only part of it actually with any goodness in it at all Button that squash. Grab a large carrot here so it cooks quicker. Cook it so it's a bit, cut it so it's a bit thinner there, and I'm going to cut it into chunks like so. Have a sweet potato here. again I'm going to cut it fairly small into chunks again and I have a red potato here use any type of vegetables you'd like for this um, obviously the butternut squash is not root vegetable but this works great on all root vegetables parsnips work really well as well so I'm just going to move that to one side there and we're going to get some foil. I want to make sure this foil is big enough so I'm going to make it probably too big. Now we're going to take the vegetables and we're going to put them into a bowl. Any bowl will do. I do have mixing bowls in the cupboard but uh, this one came to hand first. So we have our vegetables in there. Now taking some extra virgin olive oil, sprinkle some of that over it. Salt and pepper. And I have here some fresh herbs I picked and washed from the garden just a while ago. I'm just gonna take the stalks off. I'm not gonna cut them up. I have parsley, oregano, or if you're American, oregano, some sage leaves. I'm just going to break those up a little bit. Just so they mix in a bit more. A little coriander and some thyme. If you do leave some stalks behind, it doesn't really matter. You can pick them out afterwards. Just serve them to your guests and let them pick them out. So that you use real fresh herbs. The thyme is the main one in this, I think. And it just lifts the flavour of all of those vegetables. I'm not going to put any more of the um, coriander in. It's quite a strong flavour and I don't want to overpower it. Just going to mix all those in together now. Everything gets coated in some of that olive oil. Just like so. Bring back my aluminium foil. Or for the American, of course, aluminum. I'm going to spread this out like so. And right in the middle, I have a whole garlic. I'm going to put that in as well. Now, if you're on a diet, you can miss this next part out. But I think it really makes it 
I'm going to take some butter. So I'm taking a fair knob of butter here. I'm just going to chop it up. Put some all over it. Making sure I get a piece on that garlic. And just to help the initial cooking of the vegetables, I've got a dribble of water here. I'm just going to dribble a little bit of water over it as well. It'll just help to steam the vegetables early on in the part. Not too much because you want them also to sort of um, roast a bit at the bottom as well. So I'm going to fold this up. Keep all the vegetables inside if we can. Now by using the big piece here, it makes it a lot easier. Just going to fold it up like so. And if I was grilling it, that would go, if you've got a grill with one of those warming racks on, like a gas grill with a higher warming rack, put it on there and put them on first and let them cook slow. It really does pay dividends. I am of course cooking in the oven. So for me, they're going in my oven pan. But we're not going to put them in the oven yet because we've got other things to do. Right, the next thing we're going to do is some eggplant, if you're American, and zucchini. Or if you're English, like me, it's courgettes and aubergine. So we're going to take our courgettes, which I've already washed. Take the ends off. Slice them down the middle. Slice them in half again. If they're a bit big, you can cut them again if you like, like so. And our lovely eggplant here, very, very fresh. Take off the ends. And I'm going to cut it into, oh, you know, three quarter inch, as level as that is. 20 mil roughly, 19, 20 mil pieces. I'm going to do another courgette as well. Now I'm going to put all this into a plastic bag. Before I put it into the plastic bag, I'm going to put the plastic bag down like so. Take my olive oil again. Put quite, probably about, I don't know, three or four tablespoons in. Once again, we're going to have salt and pepper. Now I'm going to add some powdered garlic here. The reason I'm going to use garlic powder and not uh, fresh garlic. It's because I find sometimes fresh garlic will burn on the grill. And the garlic powder will take a lot higher heat. I like mine quite garlicky, so quite a bit. Might even put a drop more in. There we go. It's probably about half a teaspoonful of garlic powder, half a teaspoonful of salt, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper. So we're going to throw all our vegetables into the bag. I'm going to put them in making sure they're not sticking together. You notice I've got a very large bag here that is on purpose. I'm going to pick it up. Lots of air inside. I'm going to knot it. So they were fairly well mixed there now, and they were going to leave them to continue to soak. I'm going to do stuffed mushrooms. I have three mushrooms here. I'm going to do them all slightly differently. I'm going to do 
a vegetarian version and a non-vegetarian version. So that's some extra mature cheddar here. Now the cheesy one, one's just going to be cheese and we're going to pile in the cheese like so. Make sure you're generous because of course it will melt down like so. I'm going to put a dribble of olive oil on that. And a good knob of butter. So I'll put it right in the middle. So in a dish here, I'll put that one in ready. I'm just gonna move top and block out the way for a moment. And I bring in another bowl which has a knob of butter in it which has been in there for a while so it will soften take a fork it's still quite hard but uh, been in there an hour as well not too bad I guess to that I'm going to add 175 grams of pate. Now, I know pate is not so easy to get if you're in the US. Um, liver pate works. I think it's called Brausch, Brauschrager or something in America, a German name. Pate is easy to get here in the UK. So I'm using pate because it actually, I think, works slightly better. I'm going to mix that pate in with the butter. Mix all that pate in. Doesn't have to be perfectly mixed because the butter obviously is going to melt. We don't want it in big clumps. I'm trying to do this in a narrow boat kitchen is not always easy, you know. Room is somewhat limited. And I have quite a big galley. So I'm going to bring our mushrooms back in. And we're going to fill the mushroom. Now we don't need to add any olive oil to these ones. Because of all the butter we've added. So there we go. Now the other one. This will be a mixture. So we're going to add... And cheese as well just enough to bring in that, that extra flavor I'll put that cheese in there mix the cheese into the pate and butter bring in our other mushroom and stuff that one as well once again being very generous I'm going to bring in this dish and we're going to put them in here and they're all ready to go now into the oven which we'll put to one side and I have some asparagus here as well and when you prep asparagus it should break where the tough bit and the nice bit ends so it's just a case of uh, snapping it off. If you cut it, you never know quite where you're cutting it. So we just let it snap where it wants to snap. It's a good way to go. And that we're just going to put into a dish. And when you cook these on the grill, you can just put them straight on the grill, obviously, so they don't fall through the bars. And uh, just grill them. Works wonderful. They don't take very long. I like my asparagus quite al dente, so they cook very quickly on the grill. Once again, we're going to add some olive oil. I don't know, a couple of tablespoons, I guess. These, again, normally I would do in a bag and shake it all up in a bag. And I'm going to add just exactly the same as what I added to the other vegetables. Some salt. 
pepper. And also on these, I'm going to add some garlic powder. Put my hand first so I don't get too carried away. Quite a bit. And then we're just going to mix it all into the olive oil. So it all gets a good coating. And as I'm doing them in the oven, of course, they're all ready for the oven. Well, I'm going to have a little tidy up now in my kitchen and get ready to put all this in the oven. I don't think I can cook it all at once. I'm not sure my oven's big enough, but we'll see how we get on. I'll catch you once it all comes out. Well, here we have the vegetables. There's the garlic. I'm just going to give them a little stir here. All those flavours in there. I'm going to take the garlic and I'm just going to squeeze it. And all the garlic pops out. Like so. It's those lovely cloves of garlic in there. They're all now sweet. Absolutely delicious. Take out a couple of the big pieces of greenery. Now on the plate here, I've already put some courgette, aubergine and asparagus. I'm going to add some of these delicious vegetables. And here are the mushrooms. We have the three different ones, just pate, just cheese and a mixture. So let's take a knife and we're going to take a little bit of each. Little piece of that one. So we can cut through it properly this time. Little piece of that one. By adding those butter to the or the oil to the bottom of that, it made it all scrummy. Now there's my plate of yumminess. What else I did was a banana. This is an excellent dessert on the grill. I'm going to put it on the same plate. I'm going to just make a bit of space here. And I've cooked this banana. This is absolutely brilliant, served with vanilla ice cream. So let's try it. Mm. flavours in those vegetables the butternut squash with a skin left on it is a lovely crunch this is the mushroom with the cheese as well beautiful there's the mushroom with just the pate the mushroom becomes that meaty it's absolutely beautiful now the cheese one Good tasty cheese definitely works. Now for an asparagus. Mm. I've got that just right. Left a nice crunch to it. Lots of flavour. Very good. Now for a piece of the aubergine. So sweet. When you cook them with that olive oil and all, it just melts in your mouth. Absolutely fantastic. And now for a bit of courgette or zucchini. Mm. Once again, there's lots of flavours. And now for my banana and chocolate. This is absolutely great with, with vanilla ice cream. But unfortunately, my freezer on my boat is very small and it's full up. So ice cream was out of the question, but the banana is so sweet and the bitterness of the dark chocolate coming through at the end, that makes a fantastic dessert. It rounds off any barbecue, which is rounding off this little series of barbecue food. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed cooking it and eating it. 
just to let you know that Wednesdays are going to become my off the cut series. Now this could be walks around Parkland, places of interest or small villages. I'm not going to do walks into big towns because big towns are as a big town. But the little villages, I'm going to show you what's there. There's a pub, village store, village green. Just a little walk round the places of interest. So that's what Wednesdays are going to become once I start moving again next week. And we'll go back to cruising videos on Saturday. That leaves me to say thank you very much to all my patrons again. Making these food videos without them would be very difficult. Thank you very much to all my new subscribers. I'm about 130 away now from the Magic 1000. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching. Trevor out.